Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's Thursday. We're gradually getting to the weekend. And I'm spot for choice, as I mentioned earlier, on what to, to tackle because there are too many things happening in this country. One good thing happens, you talk about it. The next point, you're getting another big wahala coming up. And I want to sympathize and empathize with the guys in the central region and western region, the flooding in that area. It, it, those were places largely that you didn't use to flood, but now it's flooding. It tells you two things. Climate change, global warming is happening. It also tells you how sometimes we are reckless uh, from officialdom to the citizenry. And it also tells you how quick we are losing our forestation, which is why when we ask questions about how much we have spent to plant, how many trees and where the trees are, we need to have those, those answers. Because it's a serious matter. We won't be here if climate change, we allow climate change to take over the things. We won't be here. <clears throat> we won't be here if we allow people to build haphazardly. We will not be here. So I sympathize with them, but I expect authorities to look sharp. But yesterday, after the finance minister had, shall I say, avoided parliament for a very, very long time, avoided the people of Ghana, I should say, because the parliamentarians, the 275 parliamentarians, they represent the people in every constituency, apart from the Santo Kofi, Akpafu, Likpe, Lolobi, people who do not still have a member of parliament and everybody is sitting pretty as if everything is okay. They are a constituency on their own. We created the constituency. They were sitting there somewhere. We created a region and included them. They are sitting there somewhere. And after many, many years, three years on, or two years on, we still do not have a member of parliament for them. So yesterday, whatever concerns that the people of Santo, Kofi, Akpafu, and Lipe, and Lolobi had, they would not have been heard. If the adjoining communities or constituencies, the MPs there had not, you know, decided to raise their issues or decided not to raise their issues, the people of Santo, Kofi, Akpafu, Lipe, and Lolobi will have no voice. And everybody is watching. We have a human rights person as a president. We, our electoral commission is still alive and well. We have a national commission of civic education still there. Mm -hmm. Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, they are still there. But the people of Santo Kofi, Akpafu, Likpe, and Lolobi, they have been denied their rights to have a representation in the House of Parliament. But yesterday, after the finance minister had dodged parliament for so many times, the finance minister appeared before parliament. Now, the question of figures, and some, yesterday somebody was asking me whether or not we spent that much to design a logo for Agenda 111 and uh, how much it costs and all of that. I, that's not my focus this morning. We'll get into those conversations maybe sometime next week or tomorrow. I want to know, Mr. Finance Minister, good morning to you. I want to know and understand why up until today, you still tell us that you gave us free water and free electricity when you know we are paying for it. I want to know. You keep telling us that we are paying, you are get, giving us free water and free electricity when you know that that is not the, the situation, that is false. I want to know why you all still talk about free water and free electricity. And you see, it is because you keep hammering and talking about free water and free electricity, which is why it's part of the reasons the international community continues to heap praises on you that you handled COVID very, very well. You see the thing? You are still talking about free water and free electricity when we are paying for the free water and free electricity. Oliver, play for me the video of President Akufado announcing to us, the whole nation, that we are going to get free water and free electricity. And this was in an election year. You used free water, free electricity to win an election. Grand deception. Grand deception. 
We believed you. We held you. In fact, you used it for a campaign. People stood in the middle of streets and had their bath with free water, as they called it. And I, I remember that I even asked a simple question. I said, look, we live in a compound house. Assume we live in a compound house. We have six tenants who, who are all hooked onto one meter. Now, imagine that our individual bills are below the lifeline. So let's say 20 CDs a month. That's what each of us consumes because we are below the lifeline. If you put together our figures, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, that's 120 CDs. So that single meter would not be a beneficiary of the so-called free electricity. I asked that question. But on paper, they have all been captured as having enjoyed the free electricity. Same for water. If we lived in a compound house and six of us are connected to one meter and we all use it, and by the time we finish consuming, it's gone beyond the lifeline, we did not enjoy free. That's what I'm talking about. But the thing is that we are paying for it. Play the video for me, Oliver. All 1,500,000 customers of the Ghana Water Company, whose consumption is not more than five cubic meters a month, will not pay any bill for the next three months, i.e. for the months of January, February, and March. This relief package will be reviewed at the end of March. It has not been an easy task, I know. However, we have done so to protect our lives, the lives of our loved ones, and the lives of our heroic health workers. It has been my responsibility to come to your homes with these updates on 21 occasions. And certainly, it has been an honor and an absolute privilege to have served you as your president these past four years. I look forward to delivering on the mandate you have entrusted to me and my government for the next four years. And together, we shall defeat COVID and steer this beloved country of ours back onto the path of progress and prosperity. That was President Jakufado announcing to us free water, free electricity. I tell you, the excitement in the country was wow. Oh, President Jakufado has done very well. Oh, he has done very well. Oh, he has done very well. Well, praise you. Some of us even took it upon ourselves to be advising those who were videoing themselves misusing water and told them that, look, you can't be misbehaving like that. So we believe that it was going to be free. But on the back of that, I remember that I asked a question. And before we did, Madame Cecilia Dapa, who is our Minister for Water Resources and, and Sanitation, had said that Akufuado is the only president in the world to have given free water for a year. We were told this. And you see, it is part of what we did, which it made the world believe that we are the best when it came to handling COVID activities. Have we reported back to the world that we are making people pay for it? I'm asking, have we reported back? Because we keep mentioning it. Even under oath in Parliament, we keep mentioning it. President Kufado mentions it in the State of the Nation address. You have government communicators mention it. But is it really free? I played, I, I, I interviewed uh, Mr. Dr. Chema Bwaje, as a former member of Parliament, but he was spokesperson on finance. I interviewed him and I asked him a simple question because at some point during the COVID, I was beginning to wonder, if you go to a shop and you buy something for a shop on credit and you have to pay for it later, does it make you free? Watch. See, Honorable, you are, you are a finance person, you're an accountant. If you, have, if you buy something on credit, you don't pay for it immediately, but eventually you pay for it. It comes into your debt and you pay for it. So the fact that you are enjoying it now at no cost doesn't mean it is free. That's the understanding we should get and put out there. Let, let, me, let, let, me, tell, let me tell you, uh, let me probably give you an analogy that will help you if you want to focus on that payment, whether it's free or it's not free. If government gives tax waivers, mm. Or if businesses, for instance, get cut in electricity, and I'm affiliated with a business that, is, that enjoyed about 4,000 uh, Ghana cities per month uh, as a result of this cut, so that would be 12,000. Mm. The 12,000 Ghana cities for the three months earlier on uh, could, be, uh, could be used to employ at least one person mm. or expand the business in many cases. 
what ultimately is going to happen is that the government will come back and say you need to pay corporate tax of 25 percent right what eventually will happen is that for the job sustained i will take money from the employee or the employees whose jobs were sustained in the form of pay as you earn pay mm. so the government you might think is giving things for free when they are supporting the people or businesses ultimately the government knows that one he's doing a social good he's supporting his own people eventually all those tax workers and those bailouts will be paid we will get money to run our country okay this was in april 2020 i saw the lights far too early people called me a hater the reality is that now we are paying there's a one percent that we're paying for we're paying for these things and now there's a conflict as to how much we spent. Yesterday, finance minister said we spent how much? 12 billion. Earlier, Mr. Kojo Pankruma said we spent 19 billion, which is why we had to pay. The president is mentioning a different figure. One COVID, one management team, one country, one government, different figures. Abba. But we know where we borrowed the monies from. We know where we took the monies from. We are happy to take praise that, yes, we managed COVID well. Come and account, you do kwani kwani, eventually you come with figures that are not aligned. Accountability is very important. You made a case against the government before you that they were not accountable, that they were not transparent, that they were corrupt and inept and incompetent. Now here you are. We are asking you simple questions. It took forever. And guess what? The questions, those who are saying that the questions that have been put I ask for the finance minister to answer are way too many. And that the finance minister has not finished answering his questions in parliament. Too. I will give credit to the roads minister any day. Honorable Amakwata, I'll give credit to him any day. He is always in parliament answering questions, whether you like it or not. And whether he, he has the money to do your roads or construct your roads, he is always in parliament answering questions. He's perhaps the man in the government who has answered the most questions. Honorable Amakwata, our roads minister. The finance minister and the way parliament it works is that the questions are filed, the questions are presented to the table office, the questions are admitted by the speaker, the questions are sent to the ministry in question or the agency or whatever is in question, and then they give a, an, an indication of when they will come and answer, and then they are supposed to come and answer. The finance minister has been receiving the questions and shelving them. He takes the questions, shelves them, takes the questions, shelves them. That is why there's a pile of questions. So it's not as if people want to pick on him. But of course, it's President Akufado's favorite. So when he even was not well, we had to wait for him to get well before we gave him the, the office. But I'm saying that on this particular occasion, there is nothing like free water and free electricity. And that's the thing we must get because we are paying for it. Enough of the deception. Enough of the deception. It is no free. Play the video of Mr. Kojo upon Kruma, uh, on uh, the on a jo joy, joy with uh, Ivan Spencer, play for me. He explaining to us, and he was mentioning, he mentioned 19 billion. Yesterday, the finance minister mentioned another figure. So how much, which is which, how much did we spend? Because we have borrowed. When you borrow money on behalf of the people, this generation alone will not be the ones to pay for those monies. The generation behind us, those who are in SSHS, those who are in JHS, those who are in Nestle, Kindergarten, they will all come and pay for it. At, like we are paying for what they call legacy debt and all those things. We are paying for debt that we didn't know anything about. Play the video for me, Mr. Ponkroba. Let him, let him be telling us again whether it is free or not. Play, play the video, Oliver. The fiscal impact of COVID, about 19 billion cities to respond to COVID. And we did not necessarily charge the Ghanaian for it. We had to borrow we had to take money from the Bank of Ghana to deal with the COVID pandemic. That's why today articles are being published around the world commending Ghana as one of the best response countries. But that 19 billion CDs has to be paid for at some point. The liabilities we have incurred has to be paid for. COVID expenses are going to be with us at least for the medium term. Does the 19 billion include the free water and electricity? It does. It's part of COVID-related expenses. No, but, but, but you... But you gave us that one hand and you're taking it back there. Right? No, we were in the midst of a crisis and government had to front load. You said it was free. But it's free to you. It wasn't free to the Treasury. 
<laughs> it wasn't free to I'm, I'm, I'm Somebody, lost no so when we say free electricity it doesn't mean that the ipp producer is also going to say because the president has said free electricity i won't charge the you see, for it the government will have to pay the government will have to pay yeah but i'm saying that you are now you, 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 you are now in 2021 yes you now want us to pay for it i'm saying the government for example had to borrow money the fiscal impact about 19 billion to make all of those expenses happen in addition to that, there are going to be expenses in the medium term because of COVID. The government is asking a question. Can we continue to accommodate this COVID black hole in this already widening gap of our finances? Or do we have to introduce a revenue handle that can take care of it? And the government comes to a view that, with the greatest of respect, can we take 1% VAT to pay for that so that COVID does not become an ever burdening expenditure item for us. Yeah, but you made a choice to give us free water and electricity. You extended it and you, it served you right because, well in the, in the politics because, of the day. Because government won the election. Because governments make Only choices. doubt is coming no, no, tell because, us to pay for it. No, because governments make choices on behalf of their people. If we are at war and the government has to make a decision that we have to procure A, B, C, D, E, F, G to go to war and win that war and does not necessarily tax the population for it today and mobilizes for us but to the was populism. I'm coming to mobilize and come together and achieve it. It is well in order for the government, when we have won the war, or we are on a clear path to winning the war, to say, this has been the cost. So it wasn't of free then? Pay. It was free to the people of Ghana at the time. But when now we are paying for it. Treasury, we have to now begin to close. You just delayed the payment. So it wasn't free, you should have told us that. Well, there was nothing free. Don't believe the lie ever that there was anything free. And when they tell you there's free, tell them to keep quiet. What you have not given for free, you can't be taking funds and praises for it. I'm saying it is one of the reasons why the international community thinks that we did elsewhere. People, countries pay people's rent. I have friends in the UK and the US where they were giving monies for their business. I know people who personally have applied for NBSSI loans, which has now become the GEA, Ghana Enterprise Agency, and they are still waiting for their loans. All they get is text messages. But the monies have been collected on their behalf. They told us they were doing a needs assessment, they were doing a running assessment. People applied for those loans, they gave reasons, and up until now, they have not gotten their monies. So it is a pain and a, a great disrespect when you have given me something under the guise of it being free. And now I am having to pay for it. And consistently you are telling the whole world that the thing you have given to me or you gave to me was free. That's disrespectful. Mr. Finance Minister, please respectfully give us some respect. We are paying for it. Those below the line, those above the line, all of us, we are paying for it. We are paying for our own electricity. We are paying for our own water. And we are even going to increase electricity and water tariffs. So why are you telling me now that you gave me free and you continue to label it as free? There's nothing free. In fact, free SHS, so-called free SHS, is even not free because we are still paying for it. So stop talking about free because I showed you a, a leaflet from the book, 115 of the Ahoy's book. The children of House of Madi, I think, and South Interest, I showed you. What free actually meant. They were getting breakfast, lunch, supper with snack every day. And then every Wednesday, they get a full course dinner. That was what free meant. And they even had occasion to go on a demonstration because they wanted fish at some point. They were just giving them chicken. That is free. That was how we treated people in the past. And those form of those people are in power today. Today, we can't even find three cities to feed our children in school. We promise them chocolate. We can't give them. We promise them hot chocolate, uh, a hot cup of chocolate. We can't give them. We promise them a bar of chocolate. We can't give them. We promise them one egg each day. We can't give them. Then we come back and, and what we are paying for, we come and say it is free. How is it free? What we are paying for. How is it free? When you get your meter, uh, your, your bill today, you will find that you are paying for everything. When you go and buy from a supermarket, you find the deduction is still there. We are even paying baller tax. How do you come and tell me it is free? How, how, do you, how does anybody it, it come and tell anybody that it is free? How? We didn't enjoy free water. We didn't enjoy free electricity. We didn't beg you to give us free water. 
And I remember on the 20th of April, 2020, I asked Mr. Opon Kroma after when we were about to lift the lockdown. And the lockdown was not the whole country. The lockdown was not the whole country. It was in what they call Greater Accra, Greater Kumasi, Kaswa, and Tema. The lockdown was just in these places. And it was for three weeks only. It was not the whole country. It was in Accra, Kumasi, Tema, and Kaswa. And it was for three weeks. And I remember the 20th of April, 2020. I asked Mr. Opon Kruma on that screen there. I asked him, are we lifting the partial lockdown because of economic situations? They said, he said, no. Tomorrow I'll play that video for you. He told me emphatically, no. In fact, that interview was Bella's interview, and I chipped in that question. He said, no. We would later find out that it was because of economic situations. As now, it is evident. And that is why our president is roaming around in a luxurious jet, hired. We don't have money. Our president is flying around in a luxurious jet, hired. We don't know how much it costs because we are told it is a national security concern or situation. But that we are going around as Ghana beyond it, and we are going around begging for arms on how to bounce back. You see how ridiculous we are? How the whites think about us? They think we are joking. You say you don't have money, but you go, and, 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 and it's like a boys' boys thing. You don't have money, but you want an expensive girl. So you go and do la borrow. You borrow clothes from your friends. You spec up. You go and borrow perfume. And then you spray. And then you go and use the small money you have to hire a car or rent a car, a 4 by 4 And then you drive to the lady's home when you know that the lady will not believe you and the lady will not even come to you. So you are specking up and shining and living a lie life. Just to woo a, a girl you know you can't get. What sort of a homosexual life is that? We didn't enjoy free. Oh. Don't go and tell anybody again that we enjoyed free. We didn't, we are paying for it. Don't tell anybody that again. Good morning.